A sheet of contacts, 36 exposures, six strips of six photographs taken one after the other. You read them from left to right like a text. It's the diary of a photographer. You see what he sees through the viewfinder, his hesitations, his hits, his misses, his choice. He chooses one moment, one angle, another moment, another angle. He insists, he stops. You rarely see the contacts of a photographer. You only see the picture chosen. You don't see the before or the after, like you do on a proof sheet. A picture is taken at 125th of a second. What do you know of a photographer's work? A hundred pictures, let's say 125. Well, it's a body of work. That comes to, all told, one second. Let's say more like 250 photographs. That would be a rather large body of work. And that would come out to two seconds. The life of a photographer, even of a great photographer, as they say, two seconds. OK, contacts. You see the before and the after. Why one picture is taken rather than the other, and then why one is chosen rather than another. Here, a cast of characters in cement. The garden of a sculptor in the south of France in 1970. Less surprises than with people in movement, but the same problem. How to frame, what to photograph. The text says, give us a smile, honey. Right away, baby. That's it. Terrific. Don't move. No chance he'll move. He weighs a ton, and he's screwed into the ground. Anyway, that's what photography is about, more or less. A church in Harlem, New York, 1954. One of my first photographs, four characters framed in a doorway in a classic group arrangement waiting for a photographer. A little further on, two kids want their picture taken. The deacon watches. He goes away. Another picture. Better. The family album pose, the sharp perspective lines of the kids from a few minutes ago in the door behind, and especially the handkerchief in the deacon's back. An accident makes the picture. A few steps away, almost a photograph. A wall in New York 20 years ago, Cairo, probably the name of a gang. Torn tar paper, a ready-made photo, a kind of art brut. All you have to do is frame and click. You can do a hundred on that wall, no sweat. It's there for the taking. There are pictures like that all over, you just have to look. This picture is maybe better than that one, or this one, or that one. Another group, Little Italy. The dwarf is the street mascot in the Italian neighborhood in New York, 1954. Being photographed in the street was still a big deal back then. Anyhow, it was a surprise and a very big joke. You gotta be kidding. Hey, you got film in that camera? I use a wide-angle lens. The guys on the side don't know they're in the picture. They break up and they reveal themselves. It becomes a self-portrait. For a few minutes, the camera turns them on. Uh, I don't believe this. Hey, put his hat on. Lift him up. Hold him. But there's a limit. Both for me and for them, the surprise, the joke, wears thin. Hey, what's this for, anyhow? Enough already, this guy's out of his mind. Tokyo, 1961. A troupe of modern dancers that I bring into the traffic of Ginza. They come towards me, twisting convulsively. My Leica becomes a movie camera shot after shot as fast as I can. No motor then, in fact, I never use one. I like the excitement of reloading, aiming, and firing. 
I walk backwards. They advance, spastic and impenetrable, like Japanese should be. Cars barely miss us. We provoke each other. The funeral of the communist leader, Jacques Duclos, 1974, Paris. An enormous glum crowd, photos of Duclos pinned to the lapels, above their heads, l'humanité, humanity. For the French, it's the name of the communist newspaper. For others, the designation of a species. For me, it's both. I want a photo with the banner humanité floating over Wobegon, abandoned Parisian humans. Perhaps it's this one. New York, 1955. I was trying to put together my family album. I wanted to record everything. That day, a series on typography without people. Walls, signs, graffiti. Here the window of a bar, the Happy Days bar. A guy comes to have a look. I motion, don't move. He doesn't. A photo. The one I used in my book. There he was, posing for eternity in this typographic universe. That's the way it was at a New York bar in 1955. Then he starts to ham it up. Too much. Not as good. Down south, near Atlanta in 1963, an accident. An old woman, groggy but uninjured, stays in the car. You see her in the back, now you don't. The cop hides her. I try to find her. There she is again. The beat up car, the twisted door, the cop's fat ass, his gun, his handcuffs, his keys. He makes his report, I make mine. Further on, another report. The woman who drove the car, the truck driver, the sheriff. We're on Bob Dylan's Highway 61. I feel like I'm in an American movie. Moscow, 1959. The big department store, Goom, we're in the photo department. Russians, high cheekbones, caps, checkered shirts. They move, so do I. It's like being in a Russian movie. The chandeliers, the heavy furniture, the sun behind that burns the film. On the right, someone watches me, suspicious. I walk away. A few steps, and we're in Chekhov. I photograph a woman with a flowered sweater. Not a photograph, more of a reflex, a detail. A second later, she's still there, but everything has changed. Everything has come together. The light, the staircase, the actors and in the bargain, a pretty girl looking at the camera. This is a photograph. Paris, Armistice Day, 1968. The crowded sidewalk, trying to take a picture, hitting and missing, then I stop. Standing in the street, a rare moment, it's all there, foreground, middle ground, background, couple one, couple two, the bar, le petit mago in the back, people at the windows, I see it all at once. And as usual, someone watching me. Then another picture. The man's gone. It's over. Only one photo, that's it. Not so bad, though. One's enough. 1961 in Tokyo. In the subway at 7 a.m. It's dark. I use long exposures, about, a, about an eighth of a second. Blurred images I play with accident. Here something happens. I discover what on the contact sheet. For me, it's a photo. For others, no. At a costume ball in Paris a few years ago, using a flash with long exposures, something I've always done, the surrounding light burns out the edges. A monster comes out of the fog of flare, stares at me. A woman goes by, the flash freezes her. I guess it's the result as the flash goes off. I'll find it on the contacts, maybe. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Here I do. A county fair in France, 1982, a sack race. 
Behind the barriers, half the town's population. I go from one group to the other. They think I'm from the local newspaper. Nobody pays attention. Everybody's here, wine growers, the baker's wife, the butcher, the village idiot, the deputy mayor. I could do a mile like that, framing group after group. The soccer game in Saint Etienne in 1970. I walk along the stands. Practically no women. This is much too momentous. The local team is in trouble. Behind the wire fence, the fans suffer. Soccer can be tragic, especially the fans. New York, 1954, my old neighborhood, 108th Street and Amsterdam Avenue, the candy store. Candy and cream soda and newspapers and a phone booth and pitching pennies and matching nickels. Hang out number one for us kids. Twenty years later, a kid squats down, poses for me. Two others take his place and his pose. Everything is just right. The ads, the slogans, the Hawaiian shirt. It's a photograph. I put the negative in the enlarger and play with the focusing. The whites bleed, the blacks spill over. It becomes another picture. Why not? Early in the 80s, you lie in Coney Island, near the subway exit. People pour out with their picnics, their bathing suits, mattresses, the icebox. A hectic street corner, the photo, a rectangle of disorder. In the back, the only white woman with her kid in the sun. I frame the crowd around them. The crowd moves, one shot. They disappear. I wait for them to show up again. They don't, but I know they're there. A concert of the Rolling Stones in Paris in 1982. I'm right up close, but nobody seems to see me. I get closer, looks, faces in every direction. I frame as if I were in a studio. Here I've almost got a photograph. Then a face appears on the left. There, that becomes a photograph. And there you are, about 20 photographs a hundred non-photographs, a few contact sheets, a few seconds. 